Hello and welcome everyone to the Weekend 7 Questions today with Max Bergman from the Center for American Progress. Max, what an exceptional inauguration. Which image struck you most? I think there were a lot of uh, exceptional images. Uh, Lady Gaga, uh, Amanda Gorman, who gave the, the, the poem at the end. But for me, it's seeing Vice President Harris be inaugurated, uh, first female vice president, African-American, also Indian-American, and a real path-breaking uh, nom- uh, vice president. And I think that is the lasting image for me today. Now, what is the priority of priorities for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris? I think it's COVID, COVID, COVID uh, is the, uh, the priority getting the vaccination rollout humming. But I also think after that, part of it is going to be restoring uh, America's alliances. The transatlantic alliance uh, will be front and center. And was it smart for big tech to silence Trump and others? I think it was. And I think it's a recognition that tech platforms aren't neutral venues, but are uh, essentially like networks, that they are responsible for some of the content and the people that are using their platforms. Uh, I do think it does demonstrate that the power of big tech is something that I think we need to wrestle with uh, both in the United States and in a transatlantic context. And I think that's going to be a priority issue uh, f- on the, for the transatlantic uh, conversation going forward. Now, is an armed underground forming among alt-right militias? Well, yes and no. I think in some ways what we have here is maybe akin to uh, the 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 football hooliganism that we saw in the UK, for instance, in the 1980s, where you have uh, militias forming, there's a clear, gonna be a clear challenge of right-wing terrorism, uh, and just as there was in the 1980s and 1990s that culminated with Timothy McVeigh in Oklahoma City. Uh, so this is a real problem. However, the United States is now very adept at dealing with terrorism, at counterterrorism. And we need to direct some of those skills and capabilities to the homegrown threat that we are now facing. And I think a Biden administration will be able to do that. So Biden and many others, even Republicans, are now talking about national healing. How is that going to work? Well, we shall see. I I do think that just at the tone yesterday, of the confirmation hearings of Secretary of, of, of future Secretary of State Tony Blinken and others was a more productive tone. I think the insurrection that happened at the Capitol was a real wake-up call to Republicans uh, who were shaken by it. Uh, but that's not the entire Republican Party. I think you know half the Republican Party in the House, uh, more than half. Uh, didn't recognize Biden's election victory. So there's a real reckoning that has to come with the Republican Party. Uh, And I don't think a Biden administration should wait too long uh, for Republicans to sort of change course and to to unify. And the Biden administration will have to pursue its agenda and hope that Republicans join them, but not wait too long for them to come on board. And what will be the most important transatlantic project right now? I think this is, an, I, I think there's more than one. Uh, I would maybe start with climate, but I think technology regulations, trade will all matter and are all gonna be very critical. But then there's the all, you know, geopolitical part of this answer, which is China, Russia, Iran are all uh, going to be major topics for transatlantic uh, relations. So I don't think there's one. I think it's about overall restoring relations and then getting to work on each of these issues and trying to forge common approaches uh, where possible and narrowing differences where where we can't uh, totally agree. And I think there's just so much to do. And I know a Biden administration is going to be very eager to get to work. Max, give us a scenario. Who will run for president in 2024? 
Well, I wouldn't count out Joe Biden. I could also see Vice President Harris running if, if Vice President Biden decides not to run. I think on the Republican side, it's clear people like Josh Hawley and Ted Cruz were clearly angling to run for president. But you may see a more moderate wing as well. The, the governor of Maryland, Larry Hogan, uh, may try to run and, and try to restore kind of the, the, the conservative centrist uh, line in, in the Republican field. But it's going to be, I think, quite competitive on the Republican side. So thank you, Max. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And God bless America on this very special day. See you again next week with another surprise guest.